I mean, if the world doesn't end, it could happen. Comics! <laughs> between Wednesdays. Just trying to get by to the next fix. Living between Wednesdays. Prefer the comics over the Netflix. Living between Wednesdays. Valuable to me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Alright, who's going first? Go ahead. Me? Yeah. Alright. Jason. Comics. Surprise week. I gonna shock you all. Hold on to your hat. My number one this week is number two. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. uh, no, Jugger Marvel's <laughs> Juggernaut character has his own book. I wasn't really excited, but I was intrigued. I'm like, all right, I'll give that a shot. I want more B. C characters having their own book. That sounds like a super fun. They get, to, they get to take more risks when yeah. it's not like a mainline character that needs to be done this way. Those B and C characters, you get those weird offbeat stories more often. I like Juggernaut as a villain. He's nice. You always need a big old brute. I'm like, oh, if the needs get some time to breathe, let's see what he's got. Uh, Juggernaut number one was not that much of a fan of it. Didn't like it really at all. <laughs> um, I liked the way Juggernaut looked. Uh, the art was good. Uh, I didn't get it. Juggernaut 2 came out, and I was like, eh, whatever. I'm a little tired. I could use, like, a <laughs> something, something breezy to get my cogs turning. Uh, and you know what? Juggernaut number 2, this is your number 1. Skip number 1. <laughs> <laughs> your number 2 is not bad. I really enjoyed number 2. I like the voice of Juggernaut. I like the way it's illustrated. I like the version of the Hulk that shows up in this one. He's very. It feels like the current Immortal Hulk. Yes. They, they got the tone right for sure. Uh, they're trying to figure. Juggernaut's whole thing is he's kind of stuck in an interstice. To go back to Berserk, <laughs> 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 um, where he's not quite a bad guy. He's not quite a good guy. He's just kind of like mosey and somewhere in the middle. But he does do some demolition work for the city. So like they're like, hey, this building's going down. I don't want to buy a, cr I don't want to get a crew and insurance and all this jazz. Can you come in and just knock it over? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do anything for fifty bucks. And then uh, he runs into a young mutant who has ant friction powers. It's like she can <laughs> slow and speed up. Like she can only slow um, down. Oh yeah, momentum. She can't speed up. Like, yeah, momentum, yeah. So, so energy. He, it's, there's a girl in there. He's like, get out of there! I'm gonna knock it down. And then she's like, fuck off, juggernaut. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm in. A household name, and then he like he tries to run her over, and then she like uses it to slow him down. She slows down friction. It adds friction. Is that what she does? Something with yeah. Something with slowing people down. Uh, but she has a YouTube channel or an Instagram or something. She's social media presence. She does really good. OnlyFans. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, we're all waiting for that thick juggernaut only <laughs> channel. <laughs> um, uh, she's saved, she hits her head, she goes to the hospital, he shows up, he's like, hey, you're an idiot, I don't really like you, and she's like, did you see, you're trending right now, and uh, he's like, well, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but okay, and then, uh, Juggernaut is the boomer of this comic, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, exactly. teenage a media person being like, this is how we get you views, Juggy. <laughs> And like, you know what's a big deal? There's a whole like coalition of people who are they're damaged from the Hulk. The Hulk blew up their house and they crushed their dog. There's a whole people that gather, it's like an AA meeting, but with Hulks instead of booze. And then, uh, so you should take down the Hulk. And he's like, I fought the Hulk a lot. I don't ever really win. <laughs> uh, but he does, with the help of Friction Lady and some Shield members. I do believe that is her official moniker. <laughs> Friction lady. Yep. Yeah. They take. They get the Hulk. It's a, there's a nice. If you want to see Hulk fight Juggernaut with some sprinkled in character stuff, that's what this is. Uh, the end has a nice little bite to it, where I'm like, oh, is this what this is actually about? I'm all about it. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, I won't ruin it for anybody who is interested in Juggernaut. But like, if if the the, the stinger at the end is what the story's actually about. I'm like, okay, that's a clever thing to do with a character this dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I said it with issue one. I, I'm enjoying this series, but I, it was touched on very briefly in issue one. It was touched very briefly on this one too. Yeah. Of the fact that he's, he's not a mutant, but he's like a mutant regards of he's involved with the X-Men and Magneto and all that, right? Yeah, he was a but bad like, guy for the X-Men. Yeah, but like he's the only one in that whole world, in that whole realm, who is not actually a mutant. So they're all off in Krakoa doing their Jonathan Hickman diagram, graphic design, infographic thing. Yeah. And he's like the one that can't go with them. And I want to see, 
And I'm not saying this isn't bad because it doesn't do that. I'm, I'm literally saying I want a different book. But like, I want to see a book where like, he's dealing with that. Yeah. He's all alone. He's the only one left. What's he going to do? I want to see Sad Juggernaut. There yeah. is a King Tank Girl number one. And I feel like I don't need to spend a lot of time talking about this. If you like Tank Girl and you like her roaming around doing ridiculous shit with her gang of misfits, uh, you know, it has Sub Girl, it has Booga, it has all your regular su suspects. They're trying to find the, the holy grail of classic action figures that she didn't get growing up after Booga reveals that he had that growing up and he buried it in the yard. So they're trying to find his childhood home to dig a, up the action figure that she needs to complete her collection. What's it called? The Groyle? Yeah. yeah. It's like a play on the Holy Grail. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's great. It's funny. Uh, she blows up the stone that Excalibur is in with her tank and then waves the sword around and is like, I'm king now. And they go for it. She becomes yeah. king, yeah, right? Yeah, she's king. And yeah. <laughs> it's, it's silly. It's fun. The art's fun. It's what I expect from a Tank Girl comic. If you like Tank Girl, you'll like this. Yeah, there's like little one-page gag stories. Yeah, and like, side like runoffs because they yeah. obviously like travel through time and all yeah. that stuff. That's pretty. This is pretty typical of like the nonsense that is Tank Girl comics. It's like sort of weird, like uh, world jumping, like nonsensical humor. It kind of reminded me of like alternative rat fink, tank, classic tank girl mixed with some good old Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, yeah. The newer ones are like less grimy, more silly, and yeah. that's fine. Um, I like that about them. I think it makes them more accessible. So even if you've never read a tank girl comic, this is fine. Don't eat, don't eat my torn jeans. <laughs> Those are for fashion only. What else you got? Um, so I also read this copy of Dune. Dune. Uh, so I read the Dune comic, Dune House of Trades. It follows the sort of like climb upwards of uh, of the the guy who's king of House of Trades when we meet them in the first book of Dune. So this is a prequel to Dune. Yes. Ooh, balls so, move. So good to good to note that this is a prequel for the book Dune, and if you haven't read Dune. This is probably some gobbledygook. I was very confused reading this. Yes. There are so many strange proper nouns. Yes, Paul, <laughs> who is the uh, protagonist of Dune, uh, is not here. So don't wait for that. No Timothy Chalamet? Uh, no, thank you. The Emperor makes a bigger appearance than he does in the book Dune. I'm sure they're trying to build to something or allude to the fall of that emperor and the rise of a new one, it seems. So maybe this emperor is not the emperor we meet in Dune. It's hard to say, but but I also haven't read all the Dune books, only the main one. Yeah. Uh, I will say that if you're into Dune, this is probably different than what you've read before. And therefore, if you're into the lore building and world building and want to know where all the characters came from and yada yada, this is probably a great comic for you. Or you're a purist and you'll hate it. I don't know. I think it did a pretty good job of like describing certain aspects. I think it did good character stuff. I think the aesthetic was good. Like, I don't know. I, th I think that there's nothing wrong with this. I think it kept to like sort of like a, a Mobius stuff type of sensibility that people will like in, in a physical representation of their Dune stuff. Nice. Oh, there you go. So, it was good. What was my favorite comic yeah. this week? <laughs> I liked the scumbag. Oh, thanks, which man. Which is a yeah, I'm working on it. But oh, the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who did the art on this? Because like they're worth mentioning. Because the art is like hypnot. There's just so much detail to it. That so, was actually. Uh, we'll talk about the art later. So it was. Uh, it's a Remender book. Uh, scumbag. The scumbag is about just a real piece of shit, yes. and how the world is now in his hands. And basically this entire first issue is dedicated to telling you what a piece of shit this guy is and what a great job it does of doing that. Yes. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's just, this whole book is just like, here's a guy and here is why he is the worst person ever. And here are many examples of him doing the worst things ever. And 
I just think like there's like a disembodied narrator saying like, here's the worst guy ever. He's really good at making people hate him really quickly. And it's yeah, just he, like in through narrator and action and art and dialogue. It's just everything about this guy sucks. He stumbles into a bar. He feels up a waitress. He like insults some prostitutes that he's been with before. Yeah. He uh, tries to get a freebie from his drug dealer who won't abide. Then he steals a drink from someone. Then he steals a Salvation Army donation tin to pay for drugs. But then he can't go into the bathroom to do his drugs and and, and he didn't have his diarrhea that he yeah, said he had. Diarrhea. So he just on the street in front of a bunch of crowded people and kids just starts spraying up diarrhea and shooting up heroin. And it's, he sucks. I mean, he probably has an undiagnosed mental illness and needs help and doesn't have family to support him, but also like he's a piece of shit. Yes, I mean like, <laughs> they go out of the way to show you that this guy Louis La Rosa. Yeah, Louis La Rosa, you, you spent some time on this work. Spend some time on this artwork, and it's appreciated, because if, if there were no words in this, I would just flip through all these pictures and still think, like, man, this guy sucks. Yes. The character, no, artist. Still really like the look of this it's book. It's more of a preference. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, and that's that's what art's all about, preferences. I personally think this is a very unique-looking book. I can't, like, name any other art off the top of my head that this reminds me of, yeah. and I like that about it. But, uh, yeah, it's just like a... That's basically it. Introduces you to a dude, really goes out of its way to tell you how much he sucks and how much of a scumbag he is, and then just like hands him the keys to saving the world, and then just sort of ends on that, like, how will he do that? Yeah. So. For for a solo Judas, Judas Priest concert? That's part of his, uh... Yeah, he he's like, I don't want to save the world, and then like, like, please, and he just asked for like a. He asked for two thousand dollars cash. But that was hilarious. That's a good joke. Yeah, but then <laughs> yeah. also like, yeah, it's solo Judas Priest concert in a suitcase full of drugs and, and one of those sex rock... dolls that talk oh, yeah. and like a rocket car. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is I, I I laughed a lot reading it. I um, I think it does a really good job of informing you exactly how you're supposed to feel about this character. And I'm, I have no guess as whether this is going to be like a redemption book or just like a funny book about a guy who sucks but maybe does the right thing. He's uh, or just screws up and does the wrong thing and the world ends. I like I, I like deviant Remender. I like Rick Remender when he's like in the like deplorable world that's grimy and disgusting because like he's actually some he's actually shockingly good at that. What was that? It, it was a canceled show now though. Uh, Death Academy. Uh, murder school, oh, assassin, um, Harry Potter, but not Harry Potter. Deadly class. Deadly class. Yeah, I like deadly class. A <laughs> assassin, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, pal, uh, you got that one where Superman goes to Supertown? Yeah, I got that one to come out. I like the fourth one.